So, with everything considered, here's what I think I'll run in the marathon. Super excited for this. Today we're going to be breaking down the marathon training plan that I had and the analysis of the key workouts and just overall structure of the block that I did the last four or five weeks or so, uh, and then see where I think that puts me in terms of key workouts, uh, what paces I was able to hit leading into this next race, the marathon on Sunday, kind of see what pace I think I will be able to sustain for those 26.2 miles. We're going to go into a little bit of depth here, but before we do that, I want to backtrack and kind of talk about the training block in general and a little bit of a flashback to the video that I did at the beginning of the training block where I went over kind of the overall philosophy. And I think that that is super important to think about when you are not only setting up your training plan, but also when you're reviewing it because there's a lot of context that goes into each particular workout and it's something that's really important to look back on and say, okay, how did this workout go? Not just individually, but in the context of the whole training block and leading into future races. So with that said, I'm going to talk briefly about kind of the entire block and then we'll go into some of those key workouts. So for the entire block, I say, I'd say I hit about probably... 85 to 90% of the workouts as prescribed and I think that that's something that more athletes need to do more often is not try to blindly follow a training plan but realize that a training plan is there to guide you along the way and the most important part of a training plan is accomplishing the objective right you want to get that training stimulus in without digging yourself too big of a hole. And so that was something that I was pretty cautious about this time around. I probably incorporated more biking into the plan than I was going to originally, just because there's low impact and the weather became a factor at a certain point. All right, so training block in general. One of the things that I did in this training block was alternate between hard bike workouts and hard run workouts. And I think that coming off of a basically month long break after Challenge Daytona, where I didn't do too much training to begin with, um, I think that was really important, especially building back into hard run workouts because you still get that intensity in, but you're not as worried about hitting any particular pace. Like sometimes we can get so focused on hitting marathon pace that it kind of puts us in a different mental state, whereas biking, you're just purely going for the effort. All right, so first key workout, two by 5K. It was probably a more important day mentally than it was physically. Uh, physically, it was fine. The workout itself was fine. Nice long warm up, two by 5K with a mile jog in between. First 5K was like 1750, 545 pace, and then notched it down to 530 pace, which is a little bit faster than I anticipated, but it was also kind of a little bit of a downhill uh, on the route that I ran. So overall, pretty excited about that workout, but I think the more important part was that I was having kind of a busy and not the best day leading into that workout. I started way later than I wanted to. I wasn't even sure that I was going to do the workout um, and or be able to fit it into my schedule. And so I, I had a weird mindset going into it, but I think it's important to not judge a workout or any particular run until you're over halfway through it because you never really know how it's going to feel. There are some days where you think it's gonna feel great out the door, and then there's some days where you're like, oh, I don't really know how this is gonna go. And sometimes halfway through the workout, those things flip-flop, where you're expecting it to feel great and it still kind of hurts, so then all of a sudden you're not feeling so hot and you wanna stop, versus the other way around where you're expecting it to hurt and all of a sudden it doesn't hurt maybe as bad as you think it's going to, so overall you feel good about it. Um, anyways, just kind of a little mental game there, um, but yeah, super solid workout. So 6.2 miles at 538 average, 539 average, uh, felt good about that. 
Leading into the next one, six by mile with a quarter mile jog in between. Um, and that one I had to do on the treadmill because as I mentioned earlier, I fell on one of my long runs because it got super icy. Like it just all of a sudden started snowing everywhere, the snow melted, and then there was just a sheet of ice on the trail. Um, so ended up giving myself an extra day flip-flopping the bike and the run that week, six by mile on the treadmill, which is pretty hard to get an exact pace, um, exact time split when you're doing that, especially if your rest is jogging rest. Um, but it was somewhere around 525 to 515 pace pretty much throughout. Like I would start at 525 and then depending on how I felt as the later ones went on, I would start maybe a little bit faster or kick it up a little bit faster halfway through, a quarter mile into it, etc. Um, I pretty much averaged 520, I'm guessing. Um, but, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to tell on a treadmill. Again, same thing with bike workouts. Really, overall, we're focused on the effort there, and that was a solid 30 plus minutes of effort um, at around threshold, which was good. Um, so, then the next key workout that I was supposed to do kind of got flip-flopped around. And here's where it's important to have a plan and know what you want to accomplish out of your training and also be flexible enough to adjust. And then on Sunday, when I was doing my long run, I looked ahead to Monday and Tuesday and the weather was really kind of not, the weather was definitely not going to be ideal. Wasn't gonna be able to do that workout outside. Lots of snow, lots of rain. Um, just didn't look like it was going to happen outside. So I ended up pushing or moving my three by two mile workout into my long run. Um, and because I was going to have a little bit extra rest then in between that and the next hard day, I ended up taking out the rest and just making it a really long progression run. And especially with long runs or any sort of run on the treadmill, it's nice to just change up the pace every so often, every mile or so, just so that you stay engaged mentally. So I ended up just going 7.30 pace down to 6.30 pace for the first hour, getting about 8.7 miles in, um, and then changing my shoes to the Skechers Elite, and then for the next hour, starting at six minute pace, working down to 5.30 pace. And this is where I feel really confident looking into the race, um, but it's also something where I would heavily advise caution. There's a fine line between building the confidence that we want for race day and then remembering that race day, and then, but then also remembering that after race day, we need about two weeks to a month's worth of recovery in order to feel ourselves again. So a lot of times we try to do these mega, huge, epic workouts because we want to be as prepared as we can be for the race, but then we try to roll right into the next day of training and forget that, wow, after that race, I actually need two weeks of recovery. So it was one of those things where it was a fine line, I was ready to stop at any second, <clears throat> but I felt good throughout. So. In the last hour or so, 10.3 miles, average 550 pace on the treadmill. Um, again, treadmills can be, you know, treadmills aren't always the most accurate thing in the world, so taking both of those two workouts with a little bit of a grain of salt, um, and but overall, I felt like the effort level was at the right place that it needed to be on that day. And I think the really key thing there is that when you do these key workouts or you do these big long runs or epic type workouts, it's not only how you feel during the workout, but also how you feel later that day and then how you feel the next couple of days. And I'd say that's where I probably am taking even more confidence from that workout was that Monday, came around, still felt good. Tuesday came around, still felt really good. So those are kind of the main key workouts that I did. I was gonna try to do Yasso 800s, which are a predictor of marathon time. You do eight to 10 by 800 with 400 meter jog. Um, really, ideally you wanna do that on a track or on a f surface outside, um, but Again, weather has just been kind of a factor for me in this training block, so I ended up doing it on the treadmill. I got five in, I was running about five minute pace, 504 pace on the treadmill. So it would have been 232 to 235 pace. Um, 
and really, I felt good doing it. I got a little hot, but mentally it was one of those things, and I think especially in the last 10 days or so of a training block where you're leading into that race, you really want to be hyper aware of saying, be ready to stop at any second because you're not building any fitness here. You're not going to make yourself any stronger for race day, but you can do damage for race day. So you need to find that line between having that confidence and digging yourself into a hole. And that's true throughout the entire training program, but really, really true in those last 10 days. So after five, I just thought, you know what, this is not this is not worth the extra effort. I know I'm ready, uh, let's just stop it here. It was still 10 miles on the day, and yeah, that leads us to pretty much today. Easy 10 miles, 75 minutes on Sunday, and I have one more hard workout, uh, three by mile, where I'm just touching race pace. So I kind of like this analogy of like, you're just going to touch it, and then you, you're not trying to push it any further, you're just touching it, making sure that it's still there, and then you're going back and resting. So that's what tomorrow's workout is, three by mile, pretty much just race pace the whole time, um, with lots of rest in between, and then we'll be able to roll the dice on Sunday. So yeah, that was the training block in a nutshell. So overall, training block went super well. Pretty pumped that in that two hour long run that I did last weekend, 618 pace for the entire thing um, with a huge hour long tempo in the second part. I think that bodes well really, or I think that bodes really well for not only this race, but also the races in the future. Uh, just having that ability to do that without super solid marathon block. Really excited that that two hour long run that I did on the treadmill was average of 618, starting from 730 pace and then working down to 530 pace. Uh, so that was really exciting, 19 miles that day. And I think it was exciting because it just bodes well for future races that I'm able to do that now without constantly having to prove to myself that I'm able to do that, right? Like it just is one of those things where most of my long runs are gonna continue to be at 7.15 to 7.45 pace, and we're gonna keep the ball rolling, keep the fire burning after this race, moving into other races. Uh, for this race, uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm excited to see what I can do. I'm excited to toe the line. I'm excited to see my family. I'm excited to be somewhere where it's not covered in snow. Um, I feel like I'll be able to clip along at six minute to 5.55 pace pretty comfortably throughout the race. Um, I mean, that two by 5K at 5.45, 5.30, six by mile, 5.25s, uh, and then 10 miles where I'm averaging 5.50 after an hour long warm up. You know, those are all pretty solid workouts. Yeah, and then even thinking back to before this training block, like the three by 5K workout that I did uh, over Thanksgiving and, and then Challenge Daytona running 116.20 off the bike. I'm, I'm excited. I think it's gonna be a good day. The Yasa workout didn't go quite as I hoped. Uh, and you know, four or five weeks is probably not advisable in order to prepare for a marathon. Um, but again, this is a stepping stone in the block of other other bigger races that I am preparing for. So with everything considered, here's what I think I'll run in the marathon. I have this philosophy that you can double your half Ironman run split in a normal standalone marathon. So for me, 116.20 times two is 234.40. I think considering all the other workouts, that's five, that's basically 555s, um, a little bit under 555 pace throughout. I think that's possible. I'm actually gonna do a specific video on the actual strategy course preview uh, later on this week, but 234.40 is kind of the target. If I can be under that, fantastic. If I can be under 240, even better. Really the goal is to be able to say, I can run under this amount of time. Uh, I can run a two, 230 something marathon because in my mind that will make it that much easier to go to Ironman Lake Placid and say a 
sub three hour marathon off the bike isn't out of the question. All right, last but not least, question of the day, you got it. Prediction contest here in the comments. What do you think I'm going to run in this marathon given the workouts that I just said that I have done leading into it and shown up on the screen? Um, what do you think is possible or probable or definitely going to happen on race day? Uh, be exciting to see if someone gets it dead on hours, minutes, and seconds. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, stay tuned for more and I'll see you next time.